This is a quick walkthrough of GNSS signal generation on the Roden Shorts SMW200A. We'll start out and go to the base panel of a preset generator, go to satellite navigation, GNSS, and we're going to do a navigation test mode. Let's go ahead and configure this scenario. So we're going to do a dual band L1 and L5 GPS signal. And if we had other constellations, we could do those at the same time, or we could do those uh, sequentially individually. Uh, if we had a satellite-based augmentation system, we could add those in as well. But let's start out simple for now. We'll configure the simulation time. This can be some point in the past, this could be some point in the future, this could be now, doesn't matter. We'll specify what the GNSS receiver that is receiving this signal looks like. So most GNSS receivers are going to have just a single antenna. We could also change the position here from a stationary body to a moving body. We also have hardware in the loop if we had a hardware simulator um, that provided feedback for where the system is uh, as we're progressing through the simulation. Um, so for this moving situation, we're just going to start with one of the predefined files. We have some car that's driving in a one kilometer by one kilometer square um, located in Munich, and we can make sure that the simulation matches that. And this simulation uh, takes 560 seconds to go a total of four kilometers. We'd also change the environment model. So whether we have a line of sight or whether we're operating with multipath, whether that's due to mountains in the way, whether that's due to skyscrapers. So for this simulation here, uh, we've automatically selected a handful of GNSS satellites. Um, this is just in the GPS constellation. Um, if we had additional satellites, we could turn those on as well. Um, the GNSS receiver should know which satellites are in view given the orbit model with the current ephemeris, and so these satellites are going to come in and out, um, and it'll just pick um, maybe the best 6, 8, 10, 12, however many satellites we need to have for this uh, simulation. So right now we're using a total of nine satellites right now, but we, we could use more if we wanted to. Um, and if we had some special constellation, we could import that here. We're going to use uh, some atmosphere model as well. We could also add a noise or a CW interferer. Um, so we have a drop down choice here. We can see on this graph here, we've got these multiple frequencies here. So we've got the L1, and the L2, and the L5 frequency. And we're only generating a signal at the L1 and the L5 frequencies. Um, but if we have this CW interferer, maybe this interferer is significantly higher than the nearby GNSS receiver. Maybe that's going to compress the GNSS receiver and it won't be able to get a position. We can change the frequency of that. We could add some additive white Gaussian noise and whether that's going to be interfering with all of the frequencies or maybe that's only going to be interfering with a single one of the frequencies. And we can see a quick simulation of where that interfering signal is. I'm going to go ahead and enable that interfere. Now we can jump to the satellite simulation monitor. So here's the what the GNSS receiver should see. We've got a couple of satellites overhead. Um, we've got the G26 nearly directly overhead and others closer to the horizon. We can take a look at the ground track. You'll see that G26 is almost overhead. The other ones are a little farther away. The map view. And as this simulation progresses in time, we'll see that uh, location move along the map view here. Take a look at our attitude if we're simulating this for some airplane. We have some elevation azimuth profile. And we could also take a look at all of the hardware channels that we're simulating right now. So we have the GPS satellite 5, we have a L1 C over A signal. An L5 signal. That's all there is to it. So we'll go ahead and enable that. 
We've also enabled the AWGN distortion to that signal. Finally, we'll just turn that on. And we note that this is at a really weak power level, so this is going to require a very sensitive GNSS receiver. We may need to increase that power level. Best way to do that is we'll do that in the baseband. Um, most all the other applications on the signal generator, we change that power level directly here. Um, but because this is such a low power level signal, we need to optimize the signal noise ratio both on the baseband and the RF. We'll go back to that simulation configuration, go to the satellite configuration, we'll increase this reference power. So what does that signal look like? Well, so we can see we've got the L1 signal here, we've got the L5 signal buried below the Gaussian noise. If we don't have a spectrum analyzer, we can just do the spectrum preview on the signal generator. So let's change this to a power spectrum. We'll take a look at the RF output. We'll add that view in. And we can see what the spectrum looks like coming out of the signal generator. Um, and so it should match what we saw on the spectrum analyzer. And this should match then what a, a wideband GNSS receiver sees. If we want to save this scenario, we could do so here and recall it later. And if we have some predefined scenarios, if we want to do some assisted GNSS for some more advanced cases for LTE testing, we could do so. Now this SMW has just a single baseband block here. But if this SMW is configured with two baseband boards, then we could have a second baseband that is responsible for generating a interfering signal, maybe a, a DME signal, and we can sum those two signals together on a single RF output. We could also configure this with dual RF output, and then we could combine those outputs together after the fact.